Right, here we are, back on the river, ready to crank it. We're in Newark, Newark on Trent, um, headed towards Nottingham. And we're very, very lucky because I've got a special guest, a local guide called Dave. All right, action. Hi there. <laughs> and uh, now, Dave, what is your qualification for joining me on this voyage? What, you've got a special history with Newark. Yeah, I've lived here all my life, so I know a little bit about it. Um, I've had a few canal boat holidays, so I know what I'm doing on the water. And I like Pub of the Week. <laughs> now, Dave isn't just some random bloke who's just jumped on board. He was responsible for switching over the old hydraulic systems on the locks to new electric ones back in the 80s and 90s. Um, so what he did was he ensured that all the locks could be used by boaters and not just the lock keeper. Right then, the journey from Newark to Nottingham is 23 and a half miles by river with five locks in between. So by road, it's about 21 miles yes, yeah. to, to Nottingham from Newark and on, by train it'll take you about 40, 40, 45 minutes. Which in narrowboat terms is more like three days uh, going against the current. So we better crank it. Oh, weird. <laughs> right then, so it's ah, 20 to 11, that's late enough isn't it? Time to go and have a look around the pubs. And the reason we are pulling over so early in the journey is because we're starting in Newark on Trent and Newark is, is famous for its brewing. Although you can't really buy much uh, from that's brewed in Newark at the moment, uh, you can certainly drink there and um, there's lots of beers to choose from and loads of different bars and places to visit which makes it quite difficult to choose pub of the week so let's just go and visit them all and you can decide right here we go we start on the castle barge and this is it's basically a grain barge that's been uh, converted back in 1980 and uh, served breakfast and pizza here but it's much better known for its booze and um, its decor because oh, yeah. it's all it's all basically you know you can really feel like you're on a at the captain's table on a ship so absolutely ideal if you are a pirate or are having a pirate themed party because um, they, they definitely would keep Katie for that sort of stuff here and unlike the coffee here my dad says <laughs> Uh, the beers are consistently excellent. Now across the way, this is interesting, this is a coffee house, or was a coffee house, it's a temperance house, because people back in the 1800s were apparently drinking way too much, so they set this up to uh, sort them out. But we're not ready for a coffee just yet, uh, we're going to try and get around to the pubs first. Um, this is just beer, you might have seen this one before, it's been on a, one of my vlogs as pub of the week. And uh, it's won Micropub awards before as well, actual real awards for its fantastic beer selection. It's got so many good ales, ciders, you'll always find something you like if you're into that sort of thing. And coming soon, this is breaking news, they've got a tap wall coming for all these lovely craft beers. Now, onto the Flying Circus. This is a fantastic pub if you uh, appreciate Monty Python. And also, if you're a fan of blues, because these guys are absolutely obsessed. The Flying Circus is a high class... No, we didn't have none of that. That was right out. High class place with <laughs> serving great beers. But do stuff your wallet, because this is an expensive place as is the Prince Rupert. Um, but it, this, this is quality, not quantity, guys, all right? Having said that, Prince Rupert has got a large quantity of historical artefacts, uh, loads of uh, history here. So there's all the sort of modern, vintage-y um, antique stuff that's, that Newark is so famous for now. Loads of um, vintage shops around Newark. Uh, and then you've got lovely courtyard garden there, a bit more modern. But upstairs, you've got all these, these poor animals stuck on the wall. Um, and one in that pie that I've just eaten. Delicious pies. I mean, this is incredible food right here. Um, and, and the beers ain't bad, neither. 
So, uh, oh, they all can de definitely recommend that one. Now then, the organ grinder is certainly Dave's choice for pub of the week, as it is his local. I really like Blue Monkey beers. Um, the pub is owned by the brewery, but it's the general relaxed, cosy atmosphere here that sets it apart. The Fox and Crown pub and bottle shop, owned by Castle Rock Brewery, uh, is the place to go for a wide selection of beers, particularly my favourite type, which is the unfiltered kind, labelled here as vegan. Mm. Um, this pub has just been awarded Newark Town Camera Pub of the Year. And it's certainly very, very popular with the locals. And also, I like to see a good games corner, and it's got one, so top points for that. Another place for fun and games is, last but not least, the Clay Tavern. Now, this is run very well by my friends Sean and Melissa. So I am a tiny bit biased, but they are so welcoming as landlords that... Literally anyone can come in here and feel, feel at home. Midweek it can be very, very quiet, but on weekends it's absolutely, oh my God, what is this? Sean, Sean put it away. Right, so those are the pubs. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments below uh, which one was your favorite. Anyway, it's time to push on. Let's crank it, eh? <laughs> the night before I went for dinner at the assisted living place, which was interesting. I yeah. uh, met subscribers Gordon and Shirley there. Here's me, Gordon and Shirley. Hello, I'm waving to you right now. Well, Gordon must have seen us because here he is. He's just popped out and he's going to come and help us get through the next lock. This is Newark Town Lock we're heading to under the bridge. On our left now, we've got Newark Castle, which is a very, very interesting place. It's of national significance because it was the scene of the Civil War, uh, English Civil War. So this is the gateway to the north in Newark. So here we'd have the Cavaliers fighting, fighting the Roundheads. Um, Newark, an incredibly royalist town. Um, so they stayed true to the king right to the end. The castle is also infamous for the fact that uh, the not so nice King John. You know who this is, don't you? Well, today... No. Yes, it's that King John from the Robin Hood tale. They didn't know who I was! And he actually died in the castle after a huge feast stuffing his face. He died of dysentery, uh, which I, I think that serves him right, doesn't it? Where's my supper? But the castle's just one part of the many fascinating buildings in Newark, including this one, which houses Britain's only violin making school. Which is fascinating. Uh, all the students here are from actually from all over the world. During the summer, Newark is booming with the tourist trade that it brings in. But other times in the year, it seems quite sad. You've got lots of closed shops, which I guess is a sign of the times. But then there's also quite a few that are doing well for the sort of up upmarket sort of vintage and antiques uh, trade. So definitely a good place to go for that. And also I found this shop here as well, which belongs to a guy called Carl Shipman, and he won't, probably won't mean anything to you, but when I was a lad growing up, he was in all the magazines, you know, he's a famous skateboarder. So for me, it was just great to talk to him about the old days, uh, and also to meet his wife and his son who run the shop with him. So if you're looking for some skate gear in Newark, this is the place to come. For sure. Well, I'll see you later. Yeah, no worries. worries. Take care. Yes, <laughs> now, back on the boat, my mind must have been too much on skateboarding because I'd grinding the boat across this ledge here and uh, before going into the lock and this is being opened by myself hello um, just pressing the open button there it's all it's all very simple uh, but Dave was struggling with the uh, the flow of the river which can be really tricky there it is the weir goes to the right and then there's a double lock ahead of us and you'd go in into the middle one Canal and River Trust were on site here fundraising whilst Gordon expertly filled up the lock. While well, we're stopping that lock, this is the only uh, rubbish um, spot you've got. Um, and it's right next to the 
British Waterway, Old British Waterways Yard, Canal and River Trust um, boat yard. You can have your, you can have your blo boat blacked if you can book it, apparently. Um, but here's the rubbish facilities, just one bin. So all my recycling, it's going in the same bin. So that's that's really disappointing. And I know I've always gone about it, but Canal and River Trust, please stop painting everything horrible blue and sort out the recycling. Right, so we're just leaving Newark now, headed towards Farndon. Farndon is the Farndon. next stop. As I touched on before, Newark's history of brewing beer is, is quite a long, a long and strong one, <laughs> a bit like the beer. Yeah. Um, but Dave, you were just saying, this building up here, this what's bin, that? That was a malt kiln, and uh, that, the chimneys was for the ovens when they used to roast the malt. While the boat's chugging along, I've got to put the tea on, haven't I? So I always like to look after my guests. So today I'm just going to be making some uh, Lidl's specially, no, this is Aldi actually, specially selected medium roast Colombian, only the finest uh, coffee. Uh, and I've also got some rich tea biscuits. Uh, I, I hope Dave likes peanut butter because that's what's in the middle. Oh yeah. This is Staythorpe Power Station we're just going past and there's this really quite dangerous weir. Uh, you wanna get, don't want to get too close to that. Uh, it runs all the way along this bit here. But yeah, it's quite a sight. But anyway, this, this power station is it's a, a gas power station that they, uh, uh, according to Dave, that they just they flick it on when they need the power. So Dave, you're not having a peanut butter Oh biscuit. no, oh I don't like them. <laughs> it's funny, my dad's exactly the same, he hates peanut butter, so yeah, they're all mine. We're <laughs> yeah. more up here. Yeah. This is Farm de Marina and that, that boat there, just there, is a restaurant, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, it'd be rude not to pop in for a pint, wouldn't it? Especially when you've got a loyalty card. It's interesting here, Dave was just telling me that um, a lot of the, there's a lot of ferries, because um, if you want to cross the river, there's Newark, and Gainsborough, Gainsborough um, and then, and then or Gunthorpe. How many miles between those two then, like 10 miles or something? Or? Uh, yeah. So what they used to do is take ferries across, and, and there's one over there, you used to ring the bell over here, and they come and get you, and uh, take you across, which I think is fantastic. Well, luckily we've got a boat so we can go wherever we want to go. <laughs> Thanks to Shirley again for these uh, sandwiches. We've got something to keep us going and to soak up the beer as well. We always crank it responsibly. That's a joke. Right then, Dave, where are we now then? Piscator. There's a pub here, isn't there? Unfortunately, we don't have time to stop at the pub, but Dave has smuggled on some beer with him. So this is amazing. Look at this. Nice. Cheers, Dave. It's a local brewery in Collingham called Cat Asylum. Cat. Cat. Cat Asylum, pretty cool. Just the job.
Now you probably can't tell because I've got this neat little uh, wind thingy on my microphone, but uh, it's pretty windy. But yeah, so we're coming up to Hazelford Lock, and this is probably where we're going to end today's travelling. quite difficult to see because the sun is reflecting yeah. off the, the water isn't it yeah. um, but we're just coming into the lot we're going to see if there's any spaces we're hoping there there will be but being uh, it is still February i.e. winter and off season and all that should be fine should be fine Is it all coming back to you, Dave? Like oh, God, all the work yes. you used to do here? I'm pushing my tools over on the wheelbarrow over that bridge. Well, now you see these orange uh, barriers here. Well, they were introduced to obviously stop people from going over the weir. Dave, what we're we talking? How many years ago? Oh, 30 years ago. 30 years ago, nothing there. A lot of pleasure boaters were going down there. And yeah, people drowned. To but to test it, what did they used to do, Dave? You know, these old 150 ton of ballast from dredgings, and they, they run it up one of these straight across the river just to check whether it would break, and it didn't. <laughs> so, it's a pretty strong rope. So, there's that weir over there, and there's another one right here. So, essentially, for tonight only, I have got my own little island. Well, albeit one they have to share with fishermen and who were fishing from across to the side and there's actually also a lock keeper's house that's inhabited as well. On the next video we'll be carrying on our journey to Nottingham. Hope you'll join me. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and liking. I love you guys. Goodbye. I'm on an island, yes! I'm on a freaking island, having a good time, having a real good time. Uh, well, just one more, one more YouTube video. Just click on this one.